following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready for a killtacular episode because we're talking Halo episode two, Unbound. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this episode of the Salty Nerd Podcast, where we talk about Halo. This is going to be for Episode 2, Unbound. Heavy spoilers ahead, so be warned. I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. Matt Vader is here. What's up, dude? Hey, I'm here. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right. Getting all haloed up. Good. I'm drinking tepid, warm water. (laughs) You're welcome. It's really weird. (laughs) Jude is also here. He asked me for tepid water. (laughs) There's there's no vodka or nothing in this, man. What's up, Jude? Hi. Good morning. (laughs) Bunch of fucking complainers. 9 a.m. No no vodka? <laughs> what? Tepid, tepid warm water. <laughs> <laughs> and the producer of the show, Matthew Cages. Welcome, sir. So i um, excited to talk about this episode, but uh, for all of you out there listening and watching, uh, be sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and YouTube. That's right. And a uh, big thing for the YouTube channel, guys, if you want to comment below, that helps the uh, video get recommended to other people. So if you have comments about Halo, drop them in there. Give us a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Uh, we are always here. a bunch here. of emojis in there. We don't care. Every <laughs> week, we're going to be talking about the new Halo show uh, for the all nine yeah, episodes. And so. I also want to mention that our first Halo review got copy struck by CBS like twice. A million times. A million yeah. times. It was more than twice, wasn't it? Oh, no, it was twice. But um, basically... Uh, anything like if we showed a clip that was longer than like a millisecond longer than five seconds cbs came in and was like blocked worldwide <laughs> like no one's seeing your video how dare you have an opinion on our show yeah, how and, dare you spread and, the word and, and so we had a lot of people who commented on our our first um halo review and we had to delete those videos because they yeah. got blocked and so like all we lost all those comments and all those uh, thumbs up and stuff Aww. like that it was really frustrating but we figured out, you know, what triggers CBS. And so we're going <laughs> to, at the very least, like if they keep striking our videos, we're just going to leave out the contextual clips and just talk about it regularly. Yeah. And uh, I got a couple of things I got to say before we get into the second episode. So if you... <laughs> You're I want to give oh you're, my no, God. you're such a weak you, bitch. You have been, <laughs> I was so mad at myself. Oh. You have been self flat is it called self flatulating? Oh God. Yeah. It sounds like you're farting on yourself. Yeah. Well, when you whip yourself. Doing. Okay. Flagellating. Flagellating. Thank you. Flagellating. <laughs> flagellating. I don't, I don't, Everybody likes I don't their own brand. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Dan in our Discord. Um, guys, we have a chat for Halo in our Discord. Go to saltinerdiscord.com, jump in there. Shout out to Dan. He has been in our Halo chat all week long, bouncing ideas back and forth. We've been checking lore out. We've been going back into like Wikipedia, finding these like little minute details about the Halo uh, universe and stuff like that. And I made so many freaking mistakes last week. I oh. felt so dumb. Has he been like, well, actually in you kind all week of, long? But in a nice way. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like... like- there's a three things that I said last week that are just idiotic, and I, I feel really stupid. I want I have to correct them, otherwise Please it's going to drive me nuts. Please get it out of your okay? system. First of all, just do it. You've been talking the about Condor. All week. Okay, I got mm-hmm. mad got, because I thought they renamed the Pelican to Condor. Condors exist. It's in Halo Wars. <laughs> it's a video game. They've existed for a while. They're nicknamed the Fat Pelican. Mm. I got confused. That's accurate. Okay, Condors exist. Yada yada. Uh, the other Chick. thing I told you was uh-huh. Halo uh, was uh, Master Chief's age was like fifty. I was like, oh, he's fifteen or something like that yeah. because I thought this show was like a prequel. And it's, it's not a prequel, not like the way I thought it was going to be. So he's not 15. He okay. was 15 when he first started fighting the Covenant. And that was seen in this second episode where we get a little clip of him as a young kid. All right. um, so he's not 15. He's probably in his close to being 40s by now. Um, so that was another thing. And then the big thing that I made a huge mistake, and I was talking to you, Jude, about Halsey and Miranda Keys not being related. Apparently they are. I had no idea. I was I was like, I'm playing the game. I've never got the impression that they were uh-huh. ever related. But if you go back, it's in the books. I just got done reading Silent Storm, which is a Halo book. They're related in that one. So it's like long-term Halo lore that these two people are related. I had no idea. And I got all pissy about it. Completely wrong. So I got to correct those uh, things. Okay, well, listen. Yeah. Um, I, I did talk to the Halo fan council this week. <laughs> and they've, they've agreed to put you on probation. Okay. Instead okay. of canceling you. But if you <laughs> fuck up any more lore, you're, you're, you're going to get your Halo card taken yeah. away. Double right. secret probation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So watch it. Yeah. I'm going to. Or, or, or the council will come down on you. Okay. Yeah. Also, okay. I hate this entire conversation because <laughs> everything that you were so angry about last week 
was my favorite thing that's ever happened on the show. <laughs> so, look, I'm not happy about them being related either. Like I looked even as, even as knowing it's it's lore, I'm like still stupid. <laughs> but whatever, Great. I can't I can't complain about the TV show doing it because it's it's been there for a while. So those are the three things that I got to correct from my first episode. And going forward, I will make sure to double track and triple track everything that I say. If I'm going to criticize this show, it's going to be for something legitimate and it's not going to be something stupid. So All right, well you still get to keep your nerd card. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving forward. I was punching a hole in it though. Episode oh, no. 2, Halo <laughs> Unbound. Bastards. Before we get into it, I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and Katie's just going to take it away. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support the podcast, $5 will get you access to our club membership area, and you get four exclusive podcasts every single month. This month, we are talking about Stargate Atlantis, and we've got a couple special guests in the uh, in the docket. So head over to the club membership, join up, and uh, you get a ton of backlog uh, library of great videos, past and, and future content is going to come up. So we'd really appreciate the help. The support gets us a long way, and it helps us to make even better quality content for you guys to check out. So head over to saltynerdclub.com and uh, join up. All right, Mr. Kadish, episode two, Unbound. Take it away. All right. So we start the episode at the UNSC Spartan Training Center on the planet Reach 22 years before the events of the first episode. John 117 is up late, looking conflicted. His body is covered with scars from the Spartan 2 program. He glances behind him at an empty bed of Spartan 066. He gets dressed, grabs a weapon, and sneaks out of the barracks. John meets up with another Spartan, Soren 066, near the airfield of the base. Soren is in his armor and ready to bug out to the insurrectionist colony of Rubble, where he can be free of the UNSC and the Spartan program. It seems John was supposed to leave with Soren, but he's changed his mind and is now trying to prevent Soren from going AWOL. When Soren points out that John is still a slave to his programming and that trusting the UNSC costs Soren his arm, John relents and gives Soren just five minutes to escape before he sounds the alarm. Seeing he can't convince John to go against his programming, Soren reluctantly turns his back on his friend and rushes to steal a jet before his five minutes are up. This is all legit. I loved it. This is all. This all happens in the, in some comic books and, and books and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I was like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. The uh, the dude's arm. So he got like, um, I guess he he had some bad reactions to some of the upgrades that the Spartans were given as kids, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's straight out of the comics as well. His arm, you can see like it's all like his muscles got like really deformed, and he's yeah. got his hands all jacked up, and you can kind of like see his bones in some areas and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, this is a, a straight, a character straight out of the comics. Um, I like this episode, this, uh, little part right here. This is the only time where I feel like the helmet being off was okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, all right. It makes sense. They're trying to get away. They're running away. They're having a personal conversation. Chief is young. Makes sense. Yeah. They did a good job of having, was it the same actor? Did they just de-age him a little no. bit? No, it's a different actor. But, uh, what I, I appreciated as a non, non book reader, non game player, as somebody not knowing anything about this, I appreciated the little backstory that they mm -hmm. gave us. It made it so much easier to uh, know who this character was later on in the show. And the, it set up the relationship very well. And I, I appreciated that. So yeah. It was, it was a good setup. Cause he, yeah. he goes to this, to this area and he meets up with this character many, many years later, 22 mm -hmm. years later, if they wouldn't have included this, we all would have been like, who the hell is this guy? I mean, they were, they're clearly <laughs> very good friends yeah. and you know, well, the Spartan program, John, John's programming kind of kicked in there and he probably just wasn't able to wasn't over, committed. over, 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 override it yeah. to, and bail. So, yeah. Well, the Spartans, they're always talked about as being like brothers and mm -hmm. sisters and like family. Like this is the closest thing to family you have because you got ripped away from your actually fam actual family. So having them have that relationship and be like so close and then have that kind of betrayal, it, it all works. The only thing that I think might have been a little bit different is I don't think John was the one who called him out on it. I think it was somebody else, but that's not a big deal. They, what did uh, you think? They live their lives one quarter mile at a time in the Condor. <laughs> sure. They're like family. <laughs> Katie, what did you think about this part? So um, one of the interesting things about the Halo lore is that part of the, um, I guess, like augmentations that they go through is that their bones get covered by like this like weird alloy so that uh, they can't break bones. Mm -hmm. uh, basically a Spartan can never like break any bone in his body because of these augmentations. And you can actually see uh, in Soren's arm like the um, augmented bone mm -hmm. uh, throughout uh, some of the uh, the muscle that's like all warped and deformed and stuff like yeah. that. So I thought that was kind of cool. But um, you know, I've heard a lot of uh, complaints about this episode in terms of like, like there's no action it's all just people walking around talking and i actually thought like one of my big criticisms of the first um halo episode 
is that they didn't really set up the universe before they thrust us into it. And I always, I'm always a big fan of like when a um, fantasy or a science fiction show takes a little bit of time in their first episode to just kind of set the stage of the world that we're going to be like living in as we're watching the the episodes. Um, I, I feel like that's important because every science fiction and fantasy world is different. And so if you just lay a little bit of groundwork, it goes a long way. So like you don't have to explain things later on. And I feel like this episode did a lot of really good world building and kind of like introducing us to the characters and the situations and stuff like that. And I feel like it was really needed yeah. You know, oh, yeah. before going forward because like, yeah, you know, like there weren't any like big battle scenes or anything like this, but like the the world building that we got in this episode yeah. was, I, I feel very important. I completely agree. Uh, you know, I'm always down for a good covenant fight, you know, lasers and freaking plasma stuff like blowing yeah. things up. Like it was fun. It was a ton of fun. That first opening battle scene in episode one was a lot of fun, but, but, but need, this one is needed. You need yeah, to have a need, setup. You need some buy into the yeah. characters as well. And this, this, this episode kind of, something attaches you a little bit <laughs> something happens in a little bit that i was so freaking excited for i was like yes thank you so we'll we'll get there in a second but i was so freaking happy they did this one thing uh go ahead what happens next Katie? all right back to present day and we see master chief sans helmet thinking about that flashback <laughs> the ship that he's traveling in is going through slip space and Quan is asking about how their faster than light travel works but then dismisses the explanation when master chief tries explaining it because the writers can't be bothered to think up a good explanation <laughs> as to how slip space actually works that's Quan Fine. asks Master Chief why he didn't just let the UNSC kill her, and Master Chief responds by asking Quan if she'd just let a kid be executed. When Quan says, no, that's wrong, Master Chief says, that's what I was thinking, showing that Master Chief has somehow, maybe, sort of, broken his programming. So, so if you think so, of space as a, as a ball of yarn, Mm -hmm. a tiny we don't have time for that. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Let, 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 let me explain I, this to you. No. <laughs> I don't want a direct answer to my question. We, we move fast through space. It's, don't think about it. Look, guys, it's freaking pretty outside the window, okay? That means we're going fast. <laughs> but we're honest. actually, it's not about speed. It's about this. Yeah. yeah it's it's like, I, it didn't bother me that I much. I really wish that they had included the phrase timey wimey mm. before she cut him off. Yeah. And yeah. you, you can't do warp speed or, or you know, or. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Space. No, it has like, to be the Halo this, universe. This, style. this is our stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, like it don't matter. I get it, that. Kanish has his own style of like <laughs> hyperspace or whatever in his books. Yeah, yeah, I, but I, I really I explain how it works. Oh, you over explain how it works. Kanish <laughs> probably wanted like a uh, a checkbox with with uh, yeah. With, with this, this universe works in these He's rules. a science fiction writer. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted Master Chief to finish his explanation. <laughs> they start it and then they say, "Oh no, we don't have time for that." <laughs> <laughs> I my, love it. My biggest problem is he didn't have his helmet on for no reason. I know. I'm like, just fucking put it on, dude. Come on. Come on. Like, I get it. You lore nerds, oh. man. I, I totally understand, but I it's don't just, care. It's just frustrating. Because <laughs> like, there's scenes in this where <laughs> we'll get there in a second, but he's literally carrying it around with him. It's like the mm. most inefficient way of having a helmet. Put it on your head. Just put it on your fucking head, bro. <laughs> but anyway, whatever. Go ahead, Kadish. What happens next? <laughs> All right, back on the planet of Reach at UNSC Fleet Command, Halsey is meeting with Fleet Admiral Hood to inform him that he has dispatched Silver Team to retrieve Master Chief in a non-lethal way and that Chief's odd behavior has something to do with the object he was bringing back from Madrigal. Admiral Hood wonders what they can do with a superhuman that they can't trust. Halsey insists that they can trust Master Chief, but hints that she and Admiral Perengoski have an insurance plan in mind that to prevent something like this from happening in the future. Meanwhile, Silver Team is trying to track down Master Chief. Vanek 134 seems to trust Master Chief's motives, but Kai 125 is confused by Master Chief's actions. Riz 028 informs the team that they have a general location on the Chief thanks to his slip space trajectory, and the group heads out to retrieve their leader. So, before you, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? I have one. The, too. the, the, okay. the, the team. So, mm -hmm. are they set up like a, like a, like a, like a video game squad, like you have your yeah, a, a medic, yeah. your your heavy, your tank type, your mm -hmm. your engineer maybe, and your damage dealer or something. Is that how these guys are? Or because I noticed all their armor is a Slightly little different. is a little different. Yeah. I, I can I think I can make out like a a medic and maybe a communication person or something. So there's or so I'm just kind of curious how the teams are set up. Um, I'd have to check to see which one is which, but one of the chicks is a weapons expert, like okay. explosives and weapons expert. And she's the one in the first episode who picks up the plasma pistol and mm -hmm. shoots the alien. Right. She's the one, she's the only one, as far as I know, that knows how to use covenant technology. 
So she's like the expert in that area. Um, the big dude, um, Vanek, I think he's probably more along the lines of Master Chief. He's just the heavy big dude who can like okay. shoot shit. Um, like, like he's the guy who impaled the uh, elite right. and then lifted him up yeah. in the first episode. Yeah, big heavy dude. And then the other chick, um, I'm I don't know exactly what her role is, but I, I assume probably she was like a medic. She's the sniper. Yeah. Okay. So sniper, weapons expert, and heavy. Those are the three for your yeah, video they, game. They medic. don't really need a medic because their armor is like okay. so advanced that you know. And I'm just I'm just trying to put it in video game senses mm -hmm. because and and the only game I play like I have. I had to like label it down to like World of Warcraft level stuff, you know. So <laughs> it's like got your tank, your healer, your yeah. mage, your weapons guy. So. Gotcha. So, Jude, what was your question? You answered it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I just, uh, real quick before we get into this, did any of you guys recognize the actor who plays uh, Admiral Hood? I I was going to talk th about. I him. thought it was the guy from uh, uh, NCIS for a second, but, <laughs> but it's not. It's so, <laughs> Ted, Ted Dance. No, no. Um, uh, Jeff Harmon is who I thought it was for, for, for I thought it was old Jeff Harmon, but I don't, it's not. Who is he? So th this is kind of a deep cut. He's the actor who played Dr. Dave Bowman in 2001, a space odyssey. Oh, wow. That's oh, cool. Shit, dude. Really? Dave. Yeah. The, wow. the main guy the, from the that. Dave. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. I did it again. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you're so making me angry, Dave. <laughs> so so <laughs> there, there, there's a little bit of sci-fi nerd credit. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. I was going to say they casted him perfectly because oh, he looks just like the guy. From looks the game. just yeah. like the guy from the game. He doesn't. I think did Ron Perlman voice the guy from the game? Because I, I was watching a bunch of cut scenes and videos God, from I Halo 2. And and it's I'm listening to Admiral Hood's voice and I'm like, I think that's Ron Perlman. I don't know. I haven't I didn't check. I should have, but I didn't. Um, but anyway, Admiral Hood is, is ripped straight from the game. And uh, I like that he's on the chief side. He's working with Catherine Halsey. That's accurate. That's all. Yep, that works. The only thing that bothered me about this is they went full Star Wars. And um, there's no handrails on this balcony that they're no handrails, none yeah. whatsoever. Don't yeah, they're them. just like the UNSC isn't concerned about safety standards. <laughs> they're like, let's go walk out on this balcony, hundreds of hundreds of feet you, above you the ground. What, they probably have a shield. You yeah. think so? Maybe a little probably, force field. Yeah. How about that zip line that they were oh, riding in? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're going to get. Oh that. yeah, that, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. What are you doing, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I cannot allow that. <laughs> Dave, don't touch me there. <laughs> Um, It'd be funny if they had like that versus Cortana. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, yeah, wouldn't it be funny if like Cortana pops up and is like, or I guess it'd be Admiral Hood, but <laughs> I don't like that Admiral Hood. He'd be like, the shit. <laughs> Hello, Flashbacks. Cortana. How are you today? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, Admiral Hood was done really well. Uh, I like the conversation. I like that he's on the Spartan side. That's accurate. That works. I'm good. Definitely some high level intrigue. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't. Going on. Dude, so, the, the table talk, the political table oh, yeah, talk coming up dope. pretty soon was freaking yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I'll get there in a second. Go ahead, Kish. All right, so Master Chief and Quan exit slip space in the middle of an asteroid field, and Quan starts freaking out as Master Chief pilots them through the dangerous area, eventually coming upon the asteroid colony of Rubble. Master Chief docks with the main asteroid, and he and Quan take the artifact into the station's main hub, where a fully armored Spartan freaks out every insurrectionist in sight. <laughs> as Master Chief makes his way through the shocked crowd, eventually he's met by Soren, who calms the twitchy insurrectionist down and greets his old friend. Master Chief immediately takes off his helmet <laughs> and introduces Quan to Soren. Soren informs Quan that there's a bounty on her head not issued by the USMC, but by the new leader of Madrigal, everyone's favorite space fascist Venture Grath. Soren takes Master Chief and Quan on a space train ride through rubble as they travel on an extremely janky cable system to his home asteroid, where Master Chief is surprised to find Soren has a son named Kessler and a wife named Liara. Master Chief takes his armor off and finds that Soren's life outside of the Spartan program is far different than he imagined. Um, I want to go back to the, when they slipped, they came out of slip space into the asteroid field. Visually, it was great. Oh, yeah. I love that. Like, flying through the asteroids was awesome. But there was you always need a good asteroid oh, yeah, dodge yeah. scene. Yeah. Yeah. What are the odds of surviving an asteroid uh, field? Uh, like 735 to 1. Or something. Nice. I think, I don't, I don't, that's 3,720 to 1. That's wrong. But, I, but yeah, never tell me the odds. <laughs> never tell me the odds. There was a, a great moment that was very, very Master Chief. Like oh, yeah. the only thing that would have made it better is if he had his helmet on. But the chick was freaking out and he's just sitting there completely calm, like, yeah, we got this, man. What? She's like, what's your plan? And he's just like, hang on. Sit down. Buckle up. <laughs> And he, she says something else, and he goes, he's like, sit down. Fuck a lot. Like, that, duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he should, really should have been wearing his helmet. And, like, if he was wearing his helmet during that moment, it would have been, like, perfect. Because that's a very Master Chief thing to say. And it was like, ah, oh, dude, it was so good. But that, that opening scene where they're flying through the asteroids was 
gorgeous looking, ton of fun. Just put the damn helmet yeah, on. Yeah, man. and you know what's funny is like without the helmet on, like you see Pablo Shriver just kind of like look over as like he's like piloting his ship through like certain doom and mm -hmm. he just like takes his eyes off. <laughs> Relax. What's in front of him? It's just asteroids. <laughs> it's just fine. We're good. Um, the uh, so he's fully suited. He finally puts his freaking helmet back on. He walks into the area. Um, I, I liked all this. He moves the forklift out of the way. It just shows kind of like how freaking hugely strong he character is. Character setup. Yeah, nice little character moment there. Um, I. I don't have any problems with this opening scene except for when he takes the goddamn helmet off again. Um, that's really my only issue. Everything else is fine. The The set was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I love the freaking ragtag kind of area. Even Rubble, the, the location that I, they're in is from the books. And I stuff. heard someone call it Space Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the freaking railroad thing. That was uh, great. It, Loved it. I was watching it. I'm like, that's like straight out of freaking Temple of Doom, Temple dude. Of Doom. Yep. Straight out of Temple of Doom. It, it seems very um, kind of like... I, I don't know, like not realistic, like how people would actually get around that place. So my, my question is, the cable it, thing? So, yeah. so it went, it was on tracks, right? And yeah. then it went out the hole and it attached itself to a cable. Right. Or, was or maybe it, or the was cable it on the, the cable the whole the time. The cable comes down and like, like hooks oh, the car. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a safety. But I was like, <laughs> in, in no, no world <laughs> would I ever be like, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> like, what, what, who, who are your engineers? How many do you have yeah. of them? Are they sleeping okay? I, I, I mean, the, the, there is a transition period where they, they go off the rails. Uh -huh. Literally, they go off the rails. And they're in zero G right. right before they clamp onto that cable. Yep. And, and you're just like, so much could go wrong. Right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Could We're you get my yeah. errant rock floating through space? Anything. Yeah, I thought that, it was very so, creative. So I liked I just it. Like, no big deal. Well, it's, it's his <laughs> daily commute, day. right? No, yeah. no, no, sir. No. I also like how Soren's like bragging. Like, I got my own asteroid. That's yeah. pretty dumb. I, yeah. I brag I about my, that. I want my own space rock. Right? That'd be really cool. I love that the homes are just like hollowed out asteroids. That's mm -hmm. freaking cool, man. That's very creative, very sci-fi. I love that stuff. I like to like rubble. Yeah, but, uh, so. Master Chief's reaction when he sees Soren's family was pretty good too. Oh yeah, well, I can't. Yeah, we talked but, about it a lot in the synopsis, but um. He gets there, he gets to, to Soren's home. And uh, if you notice, he's got like, Soren has like a freaking armory mm -hmm. in his left hand side, right in the forum of where, where he walks in. He's got guns and freaking a whole shelf full of grenades did, did, and shit. They, did they take their armor off because it was that, I kind of got the impression that like, it's like you're in Japan and you don't wear your shoes anymore. I, yeah, yeah, I, guess that I was got the same thing, right? Soren said, I just redid the floors. And so like, <laughs> he doesn't want the heavy armor boots uh, oh, marching okay. around. Yeah, I, 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 I agree waxed. with you though. I just waxed, so don't. <laughs> yeah. I kind of took I kind of took it as like a cultural thing. Like, yeah, hey, when you're coming in, you're coming to my house, we're not going to war. Take your arm. I, I actually think it's more like um, Soren just didn't want John um, to have that connection to the UMS, UNSC in his house. Mm. Like, like I, I feel like the minute Soren saw John um, or Master Chief back on the uh, the the rubble, mm -hmm. uh, he was like, "How can I get him away from uh, the UN, UNSC?" And kind of get break yeah. him down and talk to him yeah. one on one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he literally wanted him to shed his armor mm -hmm. so that he would be more vulnerable. I kind of, I kind of I kinda wanted to see them do that though. Yeah, <laughs> um, I love that Soren fully embraces his um, like I'm a pirate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, like that scene where they're like, "I need you to take your armor off." I would, I think it would have been great if they were just like cut, did a cut, and with the black screen it says twenty five minutes later, <laughs> it's like, and he's still over there trying to take his shit off. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they did a real big time jump between yeah. like that moment when like you well, know, they, he's wearing his long john. They like go to bed too, right? Don't they say good night? We'll see you tomorrow, and then they pick up the next scene, and he's like having the same conversation again. I thought that was weird. It was like, I mean, don't when they put that armor on, don't they have to go like do some kind of like Doctor Evil process yeah, where like, they're all. Well, it's like, it's like it's an Iron Man. Process. It's like an Iron Man process. So okay, so I did. I, I checked this because I. This is the first thing I thought of. I'm like, I don't think they can take it off by themselves. Right. So I checked the lore. I went back and like some freaking. You books. better check the. I did. Lore. I goddamn yeah, did. <laughs> I'm on probation. I checked. <laughs> In normal circumstances, yes, they would be provided with the machinery to take their armor off. Does he off. have like a special ratchet? Yeah, he's got an Allen wrench. It comes from Ikea. It's like this big. It's got corners on it. And then that doesn't really work. That's a legit Space, space <laughs> Allen wrench. Yeah, the, the Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Mjolnir armor comes with uh, instructions that you can't read. Because, yeah. It comes in four different pictures. So yeah. insert, from Ikea. Insert the schmiernip into the... The meow meow. The yeah. flirpity flirp. Twist. With the, the flirpity flirp. The beer twist, beer. twist twice. <laughs> 
to in a <laughs> upwards direction. Locking mechanism. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, so I did check. They said uh, Spartans can take their own armor off if they have another Spartan team member with them because it it's a two-man process. Oh. So because uh, Soren was That's with them, hot. he was able to do it. So, but Soren had armor on. Does he leave his on all the time? And he was just like really happy to get it off because Master Chief showed up? Probably. It's like, man, I've been wearing this fucking thing for just, 18 years. That's why he only has one kid. Yeah. <laughs> just bangs with the armor on. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, his wife's like, leave the armor on. <laughs> <laughs> tink, tink, tink. Um, but yeah, they can technically do it themselves. It's just not ideal. It just takes a long time. Just have to have the special wrench. Yeah. You have to have the Allen wrench. I, I, okay. I thought his wife looked kind of weird. What do you mean? I mean, like, like the, he's, the style of her hair and like the way she dressed and stuff like that. It just seemed weird to God, me. You're so goddamn judgy, man. Know, right? Alien planet, dude. Do, does <laughs> she exist in the, in the lore? And does she look like that? I so? don't know. Okay. Oh, man, she's testing your lore. Yeah, she is. I don't know. I've never really looked into Soren's character. I, I don't know if I this is made up I don't think the show. Uh, Soren um, got married or had kids. And, and the expanded if you know, universe. pop it in the comments because yeah. I want to know. I got to go check. All right, what happens next? All right. On the Covenant mega base of high charity, the three prophets of mercy, truth, and regret are hearing the report from the elite who saw Master Chief activate the Forerunner Keystone on Madrigal. A key determines the artifact will lead them to the halo ring that they've been searching for. And the prophets declare that they must retrieve the keystone from the humans. McKee says she'll retrieve the artifact herself, but Mercy objects, citing that she's too important to possibly lose such a dangerous endeavor. However, McKee points out that she'll have an easier time blending in with the humans and can retrieve the artifact quicker than sending a strike force to fight their way to it. During this exchange, we discover that the prophet Mercy found McKee and raised her within the covenant, tutoring her and teaching her about something called the Great Journey. McKee wants to repay this kindness by recovering the keystone and leading her adopted species to the sacred ring. Okay. I don't, what, what were you going to say? I got such a huge Dark Crystal vibe off these things. Yes! The <laughs> whole time I was watching it, I kept in my head going, mm. they, they need to... They should have Mark Hamill voice one of them. Dude, I would have loved it if these things were puppets instead of CGI. Yeah. Like, oh, I understand yeah. that would have been a lot for them to do, but I think it, I think it would have been worth it. Like, mm. <laughs> 100%, dude. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Same person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just fat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, McKee. Okay, so I did a little bit more digging into the Halo lore, and I was trying to figure out where this McKee character came from because I called bullshit on it last week. It's still kind of bullshit, but there's at least a precedence for it. So, long, long time ago in Halo lore, a character that, that we dubbed the Librarian uh, put Forerunner, like digitized DNA, into the human. Gene pool. gene pool before they had evolved and they were like when you evolve to a certain point you will at that time be able to unlock forerunner technology you are the chosen uh species of the universe to take on the mantle of responsibility they're like this is your job the forerunner is kind of like pass it down to humankind and throughout history the covenant or the prophets they were like worshiping these forerunners as gods we talked about this last week where they came up with the whole religion that the covenant is based around and the Covenant found out that the humans had a tie to the Forerunners and could activate their technology. And they were like, A, either we have to work with them and that's going to blow a giant hole in our entire religion. Or B, we convince everybody that they're rats and vermin and we convince them to kill everybody. So they went with option B and they convinced the entire Covenant religion to kill all humans. Path of least resistance. Right, yes. yeah. So that they could keep that secret hidden from everybody else and keep their power. Because the power is based on the religion. If the religion has a giant freaking plot hole in it, then it all oh, disappears. you mean like most religions? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very <laughs> close to most religions. Uh, so this character being around who can activate Forerunner technologies, you know, they're a chosen one or a reclaimer or whatever they dub them in this show. That's there. I, I st it's still a stretch to have one of the main prophet characters like raise one as an adopted daughter. That's a bit of a stretch, but the precedent is set that yes, humans can activate forerunner technology. The covenant prophets know this and they're either trying to keep it a secret or they're trying to use it to their advantage. My guess is this McKee character is at some point in time going to be betrayed by the prophets. Just like as soon as her usefulness runs away, yeah, runs totally. out, as soon as her usefulness is done, they're just going to freaking toss her to the side. So, well, also, um, so in the Halo lore, basically the like the entire human race is a reclaimer. Uh, like they can activate Forerunner technology. 
um, in the show, they seem to be changing that so that um, they're only like special humans who are able to be um, reclaimers and activate the technology. So not all humans have this uh, ability in the show, whereas in the game, all humans did. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I don't know, man. Your nerd Halo I, card I, is on. The yeah, line. I don't know. Because yeah. I, I checked it. And it I will get a hold of the situation. Halo Council. Chief, it's very few. So basically, <laughs> the, the, the evolutionary process has to be so, has to be advanced enough for the reclaimer. Well, the, so the human race is basically the um, chosen successor to mm -hmm. the Forerunners. Yeah. And they were given the mantle of responsibility or right. whatever it's called. And, and the librarian seeded the human uh, race with um, the ability to be the reclaimer because they were the heir mm. apparent to the forerunners. And in the games, there are many um, such, there are many examples of just regular humans activating forerunner technology. And uh, that was one of the big changes that the, the show has made is to make like chosen ones or blessed ones mm -hmm. like rare among the human species, but they are limited to the human species. Okay. I got different information, but I'm not going to argue about it. It's fine. Well, we're going to find out in the chat. Sure. Or, or, or in, in, in the, the comments. comments. Comment below. They're, they're going to go, man, you guys know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> hey. That is correct. That is good. <laughs> would we not do the same thing? <laughs> we absolutely would. And then, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to say some smart ass. That's why I said, and I shout out to Dan like, in Discord <laughs> because he was checking my shit last uh -huh. week. And I was like, God damn it. You're right. Okay. 10-4. I, yeah. I don't mind people doing that because no, it, helps, it helps me. I don't want to come yeah. off like a freaking idiot. You, you daft know, cow. Cause, yeah, because you know if there's some freaking TV show that goes out there and changes something, we're going to be in the comments going, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, well, well, actually, I, if in you, the novel, blah, 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 <laughs> on page 193, yeah. paragraph That's legit. Two, it clearly Dude. states that <laughs> such and such, such. <laughs> it's like, That's, shut the fuck <laughs> up. That's yeah. legit. Leaving no room for interpretation. That's legit what happened to me this week with Halsey and, and, and uh, Miranda Keys. It was like, oh yeah, if you listen to Audio Log 12 <laughs> from Catherine Halsey's uh, doc, you know, whatever the fuck. Some like little she side says, thing to get the push yeah, on the She says button. that Miranda's her daughter. And I'm like, what the fuck was I going to know that? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> it's like some little secret thing in the video game. Seriously, yeah, it's yeah, it's like, and they're like, and one cutscene, you can see a picture of of uh, Miranda <laughs> on her desk. I'm like, who oh, the fuck that is? <laughs> little Easter egg thing. Little Easter nobody egg. Sees. Listen, like, no <laughs> one has ever called us the Salty Nerd Podcast, <laughs> the podcast that knows everything, <laughs> or is, and no one ever will, or is even accurate it. most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know what the hell we're the talking about. The super accurate podcast yeah. who knows everything. We drink way too much to do that. <laughs> Seriously, but I, but I did feel like a fool last week, and I, I had to correct myself. That's otherwise, a, otherwise, I'd be guilty of being a poser. We <laughs> are. We are. Who we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what happens next, Kavish? At UNSC Command, Captain Keyes is informing the military leadership that Venture Grath has now taken control of Madrigal, but with more of an iron fist than the UNSC anticipated when they put him in charge. In other words, he's a space fascist. When the subject of the Master Chief comes up, Admiral Hood points out that Master Chief is a symbol for the war effort and punishing him would, would be bad for morale. This gives Halsey the chance to introduce her Cortana project, boxing in Admiral Perangoski to agreeing to its institution despite its unethical nature in front of the entire command council. Cortana is designed to override Spartan consciousness and replace it with a general AI that can be fully controlled, creating a true super soldier that is entirely obedient to UNSC command. Despite some of the moral objections with Perangoski's reluctant support, the command agrees to the creation of Cortana. This political back and forth and this little coffee table thing, really or the good. conference table, it was freaking good. Like Halsey, when she was like, well, actually, uh, Perengazi, <laughs> go ahead and, and she, uh, you know, let me do this thing. And, and uh, Perengazi was over like, she just, ropes she's, her in. she's looking at her like, you bitch. Uh -huh. I, I, loved, I loved how they had this framed and set up and the, the expressions oh, on the their face. Yeah. It's like, oh, you bitch. Yes. It's like, I hate how you're playing me right now. <laughs> but she so can't good. do anything about it. Yeah, her yeah. hands are tied. If yeah. she fought her on it right there in front of everybody, she'd look like a fool. You, you know what, what I was doing when I was watching that scene? And, I, and it's really dumb, but I was thinking about this fucking guy over here. And how he's probably going, oh, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> they set this up perfectly. Yeah, yeah did you like this scene, Cage? As like a, a writer, like, I, I loved it. I thought the characters all worked together. Yeah. Admiral Hood is Admiral Hood. Halsey is, Hal she's doing he's, Halsey he's shit. He's changed how I watch television. Aww, that's and good, though. I don't know if that's a good thing, because <laughs> I find myself way more critical of some stuff. But, but anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. Well, well, yeah, what did you think about this scene? I liked it. I mean, I, I feel like... 
one of the things I liked about the games is that they were very simple. The UNSC are good guys. They have a mission to defeat the evil aliens and like everything just comes off as like, okay, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. And we're justified in doing it. And one of the things that they're doing with the show is they're game of thrones in it where mm -hmm. they're injecting, uh, gray areas and political uh, maneuvering and all this other stuff into the storyline. I understand why they're doing it. They're making it, you know, um, you know, a little bit more in, uh, adding a little bit more intrigue to the story. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of saw a hint of this earlier on when, um, Halsey was talking with Admiral hood, um, where she was like, you know, Oh, me and Admiral Parangoski have an insurance plan mm -hmm. in place, you know? <laughs> um, so, uh, it didn't kind of surprise me that she pulled this, uh, you know, this kind of thing of boxing in Parangoski. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just kind of like, I kind of miss having like very clear good guys and bad guys uh, in this story where it's, it's like, I, I don't like, you know, after years of playing the game and the UNSC being the good guys, I'm like, I kind of don't like them being like, such assholes you yeah. know so i was kind of split about it but overall i thought it was a good scene yeah i agree with you on on that principle of like the unsc has always been the good guys you play the good guys in all the games and now all of a sudden in this show you're like we're gonna we're gonna flip that a little, a little political intrigue yeah. always makes things more interesting i can see that i can see that but i did enjoy this scene it was yeah. a lot of fun but uh, i did find it interesting that uh, they're, they're talking about how they in, they put venture graph in the leadership position on Madrigal, like they installed him as like the new leader and uh, he's coming, he's basically like just being like Hitler yeah. on the planet. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. they're, they're like, he's ruling with a little bit more of an iron fist than we anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's our iron fist. Yeah, they're like, know? oh, did anybody see that coming? Like friggin' <laughs> just execute, dude, he was a I, I, mean, I mean, he dresses like a Nazi. What yeah. were they expecting? <laughs> yeah. Dude, he was just like, executing people for yeah. point blank range with like, no wow. he wasn't even doing anything it was just to make a point or something it was it was insane but i know exactly what's going to happen is we're going to have master chief plot line with the forerunner tech and we're going to have the little the little chick from that place i can't remember her name she's going to go on her own little escapade Quan. she's going to go and and uh, take on the freaking bad guy from her home planet like that's going to be like the the two i can already see the two plot lines going oh, like yeah. this what's the um the blonde girl in the robe what's her name mika or something mika mika mm. Ma maki maki i'm sorry whatever um i totally see her like switching sides like i feel like she's gonna learn more about the people of from, earth from which she comes yeah, yeah they kind of set that up in the first episode where she was reading the the human stories yeah. you know yeah, I, if I swear to God, if she's related to Chief somehow, I'm a freaking. Oh my God. My, my theory is that she's like <laughs> oh his no. sister or something. Oh, sister, uh, sister. <laughs> God damn it! How many kids does Halsey have? <laughs> what do you mean, like Master Chief has not Halsey's? Big oh, that's kid. true. I'm sorry. I, I get that because Halsey is kind of. Give it here. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> my card. There you go. Like, you daft cow. I know. No, Halsey's like the mother figure for the Spartans. All the Spartans kind of see Halsey as that as that type because she's the one who created them more or less that in their true form. And uh, I always look at her as being the mom of Chief. Just yeah, that's kind of like that's why when when I found out that Miranda was Halsey's daughter, I was like, oh, so that whole thing in 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 Halo Two and when you're working with Miranda, it's like you're just like hang, hanging out with your sister. It's weird. I mean, uh, you know, in the Halo game lore, um, one of the things about the Spartan 2 program was they specifically kidnapped children that they, you know, knew would probably survive the process mm -hmm. and replaced them with clones that then died, like, of, like, natural causes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that the parents thought that, like, their, their child kids, died. So they, yeah, so brutal. they didn't go looking for them. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. dark. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> like, you know, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that, like, you know, um, Master Chief's family, after they lost him, had a daughter that was then found by the covenant and the family was all killed um by a covenant attack somewhere god damn it please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on all right guys before we get into the rest of the episode we're gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support the podcast and get some awesome merch in return, go to saltynerdstore.com and check out our t-shirt selection. We have a whole ton of really cool nerdy t-shirts that you can choose from, and uh, we love the support. And if you do buy something from us, please, by all means, send us a photo on Discord or on Instagram or something like that. We'd love to share it with people. If you're wearing our swag, we would love to uh, to check it out and see what's going on and which one you bought, because uh, I'm really curious. I don't know. It's weird. Put it on your dog. We love it when people love do that. Love that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, somebody bought one of our t-shirts, put it on their dog. I was like, Perfect. Yeah. Jude's yeah. actually wearing our Buffy the Vampire t-shirt. Uh -huh. Is that you can't get it anymore? Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like I don't think that's available anymore. It's like 
limited time. <laughs> I love it when Kadish wears the bat rat spider crab. That's a deep and cut. The uh, angry red planet is, is behind, behind Vader. Vader. Yeah, I think it's behind your head. Move your head a little bit. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's from that yeah. movie. The retro you never, rewatch. You never see that poster with my giant head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, saltineerstore.com uh, helps support the podcast, get some cool stuff in return. All right, so let's continue on. What happens next? All right, so on Madrigal in Madrigal City, do we have a city called Earth City uh, on our planet? Um, Is that a thing where like, you just name the city after the planet? Yes. No. New York, New York? <laughs> <laughs> yes, every time I type something into Google Maps, it reminds me that it is, in fact, on oh, Earth. Earth, yeah. It's <laughs> like invasion. Yeah, invasion. <laughs> first, <laughs> first step in the directions, stay on the planet that you currently are on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Oklahoma City. Earth. Earth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so on Madrigal, in Madrigal City, Venture Grath is executing all the loyalists to his predecessor, Jin Ha, Quan's father. He then shoots down a drone that was broadcasting his executions, and Quan Ha is horrified by what she sees happening on her home planet. Liara shares with Quan about how her entire planet was destroyed by the Covenant when she was a child, and how Quan needs to know the difference between revenge and justice if she's going to cope with what she's feeling. Meanwhile, Master Chief is hanging out with Soren, and we learn that Master Chief is unable to taste food thanks to all the Spartan treatments that suppress his emotions and humanity. Soren is intrigued by Master Chief's apparent questioning of his Spartan programming and is curious about what's in the box Master Chief has been lugging around. Soren tempts John to get rid of the pellets that the UNSC pumps into him in order to stop feeling numb and open his eyes. Soren's kid Kessler stamps a happy face on Master Chief's hand, and still amazed that Spartans are able to have children, Master Chief takes the stamp as a symbol of loyalty. I like that moment. Yeah. The, the tattoo that on his hand. Yeah. That was cool. I liked the little smiley face, and the kid was cute. It was good. That was a good moment. What else happened? <laughs> well, I liked we... his reaction when he was like, I accept. Yeah. Like it was like an oath he was oh, taking. Yeah, he was yeah. so serious about it. It was cute. It was adorable. I liked it. We, uh, we, we learned that they eat <clears throat> not food. Pellets. Pellets. Protein pellets. Sounds great. That sounds awesome. <laughs> really I'm not opposed to that. that. Honestly, that's some shit you would start doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. If they were like, hey, here's this thing. You can do this and you don't have to eat. I'd be like, oh, shit, that's so easy. <laughs> I can save <laughs> so time much saver. time. So much time. Here's your alcohol pellet. Great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just don't put it up your butt. No. Somebody I'm would. totally going to put it up my butt. Some, somebody would do that, right? Somebody would. This one pellet has to last you a month. I know just how to make it last up gonna that long. I'm going to stick the food pellet up my butt. It gets you full quicker that way. <laughs> it's, it's much more intense. Straight to the bloodstream. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have you ever had a rolling brown out? <laughs> I was thinking. Hey, that stupid movie. <laughs> We're so fucking weird. Shout out to Sex Drive. <laughs> Nothing uh, brown! Nothing, <laughs> Nothing brown! brown. <laughs> I was thinking of a road trip where he's like, I need some help. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Better make it three. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to the food pellet store. Yeah, I'm like a pork chop and mashed potatoes. A steak and asparagus. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Down the gullet. That'll be hundred and twelve dollars, please. Do you want but it's this? A pill. Do you want this for uh, dissolving under your tongue, or would you like it uh, for S -s suppository? <laughs> suppository? Would, you like, uh, would you like this T-bone in a? What would you like this in? in a vape? Oh, suppository, definitely. Oh. Would you like this in a vape form? Vaping food. <sighs> <laughs> yes, it's like oh giant God. clouds. We're stuff. off the rails. <laughs> We're not even drinking. I just pictured how fucking annoying all of humanity would be if all of our food was just in, in vape form. Where did this dude that lives on an asteroid get a, like a mango or whatever he was eating? He's That's, a pirate. Yeah, he's a pirate. <laughs> yeah, apparently, uh, rubble trades and a lot of stuff. I mean, they have churros apparently mm -hmm. and all that yeah. good stuff. Uh, the thing that confused me a bit was that um, so like there was that drone that was basically recording all the war crimes that ben Venture Graf was getting. Oh, yeah. And then, like, he shoots it down, and, and Quan Ha is just sitting there watching this, and it's like, is that being broadcast, like, like widely, <laughs> or is that just, like, her private feed? Like, how does that work? Exactly? I, I would assume that it's probably some kind of an insurrectionist feed, like, hey, this is what's happening on our... ITV! Yeah, <laughs> our, it's like info wars for the insurrectionists. <laughs> some crazy Alex Jones dude up yeah. there. They're turning the elites gay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me show you right here. This, this, this is what's going on right, right now. Okay? He's doing his thing. And he's like, yeah. this dude is executing people. <laughs> he 
He's a demon from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like sulfur. Buy my supplements. <laughs> Get your food pellets. <laughs> 1995. <laughs> Guaranteed to suppress you. <laughs> Don't eat that UNSC crap. <laughs> Fuck, we need a character like that in this movie. <laughs> Get your Super Beats right now. <laughs> Superbeats.com. Get your testosterone. <laughs> Get your testosterone checked every day. And if you call right now, we'll throw it in an extra bottle. Get your bone broth. <laughs> It's much superior to vegetable broth. <laughs> Makes you rock hard. So, Did uh, we talk about them going to that dude in the prison? Not not yet. Okay. But uh, real quick, um, so Liara <laughs> shares the fact that she grew up on a planet, I think it was called Harvest. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it got um, hit by the Covenant when she was a child. And so, you know, it makes me think that the Covenant War has been going far further than they... Um, they kind of hinted at in the first episode because they said they've been fighting the covenant for six years, but like it's it feels like you know like if if that planet got destroyed yeah. by the covenant when she was a child. What did I say? What did I say earlier? Well, I checked the date on when harvest was dead. Now we're speculating that it's harvest because she she looks like about the right age for to, if when I was a kid the covenant came and glassed my planet. If you go back in time, I think it was like twenty five thirty something is when harvest so was glass. Just, just to be really specific, when mm. they say my planet was glass, that means they just nuked the shit out of it, right? Yeah. Well, no, they didn't nuke it. So the Covenant warships have this giant plasma beam, kind of like the one from Independence Day, where it just like opens up in the okay. center and like freaking just, just melts just everything. Just melts everything. But the plasma is so hot that it literally turns. Yeah, because the planet you know that's glass. what you know, like. That's what nuclear bombs yeah. do. The, the, where they hit, it just turns, the, yeah. turns sand in the glass. And exactly. So I just kind of figured that's yeah. what it meant. But it's very cool. similar. But it, just imagine, like, if you want to look at it visually, it looks like Independence Day. When the, freaking thing, <laughs> beam, the beam comes down. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do to planets. Once they get... So they go to these these planets because they have Forerunner technology there. And they, they steal the Forerunner technology. And then to, like, wipe the slate clean, they just glass the planet after they leave. That's kind of like their, their thing. Jerks. Yeah. Man. And uh, so they Harvest... Never. They hover over the planet, mm -hmm. and then all of the dummies on the planet are like, "It's so pretty." Yeah. Well, harvest was Welcome. the harvest was the first time we, I think humans ever came in contact with the covenant, and it was like real bad, right? Obviously, because they melted the planet. So, if it happened in the same timeline as the games, twenty five thirty, we're talking about twenty some odd years ago um, until now. So, it's about the right time. I think that's probably what she's talking about. She's talking about harvest. So, okay. is, so is there an Earth in this world? Mm -hmm. This is like. Yeah, our Earth. So Earth is that is trash planet. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna, how, are well, we... well, in the first episode, they talk about the United Earth government, and the UNSC is basically like the military branch of the United Earth government. What year is it? It's twenty five fifty two. Yeah, five hundred and twenty years from now. Okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, there is an Earth. Reach is like Earth two. Reach is the second most important planet to the UNSC. Earth is number one. Okay. Okay. Cool. And where is this halo thing? Oh, in the, in the world. <laughs> there are actually multiple halos. Yeah. <laughs> there's <laughs> alpha halos and there's you, beta you, halos. You know this thing the show's named about yeah. that we haven't seen yet. Well, we'll so. get there. they okay. got to set it up. All right. Yeah, so so part of the storyline is them finding the halo. So, oh. Yeah. yeah. So Cortana is actually the one who has the coordinates to the halo, which is why in the first game you I pop wonder, out of hyperspace. I wonder if Din Djarin is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just chilling out. You know, taking that hours. motherfucker leaves his helmet on. <laughs> Does he though? Does he? This is the way. <laughs> All right. So on the UNSC frigate stalwart Dawn, Silver Team is trying to ta track down Master Chief, tracking his Condor spacecraft to an asteroid belt. While Riz and Vanek are focused on the mission, it seems that Kai is the only one actually curious about the Master Chief's motives. Nice little setup. I don't have any issues with this. I get the sense that these guys are. Very loyal mm -hmm. to Master Chief. Yes. Well, what, and they're what, just kind of playing along here. So what's, what's interesting is Kai was the one who was in the um, like the excavation site with Chief when he activated the artifact, and she seems to be the only one who's like actually questioning what's going on. The others are always very like like Vanek is, is, is like um, Master Chief always has a plan. We're just going to trust that he knows what he's doing. And then yeah. Riz, like like she's she's just like oh the UNSC told us this, so we're going to do this. And and Kai's just sitting there like. 
really? Like, <laughs> maybe there's something more going on here. <laughs> I'm interested to see. I do think that they need to be completely loyal to Chief because that's like their dynamic for all the Spartans. The Spartans always have each other's backs. So mm-hmm. I, if they if they go like a route where like one Spartan's going to go off and and decide that it's not a good idea to follow Chief, eh, it's going to be kind of like Guardians, uh, Halo Five Guardians. Was it Halo Five? Yeah, yeah. Guardians is kind of goes that route where there's like a Spartan team that is told by the UNSC to go find Chief and bring him in because he's going on AWOL. And they're like, all right, we got to go find Chief. Then the story progresses, and obviously Chief has a fucking plan. Yeah. But anyway. Starring can, Nathan Fillion. <clears throat> and, uh, dude. And what's his name? Um, Luke Cage. Yeah, Luke Cage. And Nathan Fillion is a Spartan. Dude, if they bring Nathan Fillion into this show at some point, like season two or something, as a Spartan, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. I'm going to lose <laughs> my shit. He's a little right old now. to be playing a Spartan. No, he is not. I could, Dude, put him in the armor and freaking... Like dude. an old and grizzled. He's yeah, yeah he's yeah. Buck, dude. He's Buck. Yeah, it's right. Buck. You gotta have Buck in the show. Come <laughs> I on. Don't, I don't know who Buck is. He's awesome. So, so that's that's not, what he is. You're not he's telling awesome. me anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what happens next? All right, back on Reach, Miranda Keys confronts Admiral Perangoski about Halsey's sole access to the Keystone from Madrigal once it's retrieved. Apparently, it's because of Miranda that the UNSC's advances in shielding, active camouflage, and slip space navigation have occurred. But despite this, it's Halsey's Spartan program that always gets the lion's share of the funding. However, despite Miranda's convincing argument that she should have access to the artifact when it's retrieved, Perangoski has had enough of being manipulated for one day and tells her to go fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more of that political back and forth. Yeah, I think Halsey's got the upper hand though it was interesting to hear about how miranda has been responsible for all these like breakthroughs in their technology mm-hmm. like you think over the course of like 500 years that other people might have been you know <laughs> contributing to that but apparently <laughs> this is all new stuff that they've uh that they've pioneered well she's special she's gifted she's gifted i don't know i i thought it was it was cool i, I like this scene um Mar- I just I just hope they do Miranda right. Like Miranda's a big deal in the games and, and she kinda does like a, a really cool storyline and self sacrifice, all that whole she's a hero. It's really cool. So and she's ha- and she's the young military scientist who mm-hmm. the old military lady tells to go yeah. Go do your job. Yeah. Kind of thing, right? I'm I'm still I'm still learning these characters. That's fine. That's Especially fine. the uh the the generals and the military people. So I get, I get all their their mother and daughter. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Bing! Just <laughs> Halsey, like, Halsey right. and and Miranda, the, the, okay. The the and, lady who's, and the dad is the other is Captain yes. Keys. Okay, okay. So you got Captain Keys, who was the father of Miranda Keys, who was was once married to Catherine Halsey, and then you have Admiral Hood, who was the guy who's always on the Spartans team, and he's like, let's get. These he was people. the guy that was on the ledge with no handrails mm-hmm. talking to Halsey. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I think so. Cool. All right. Moving on. All right. Back at Rubble, Master Chief shows Soren the Forerunner artifact and tells him what he did with it. Soren then touches the artifact, but nothing happens. Soren tells Master Chief he knows a guy who might have some insight on the artifact, a former Covenant POW named Reth. Master Chief reluctantly agrees to go see Reth, and Soren takes him to a self-confinement facility that acts as a refuge for unstable people who can't function in society. They go to Reth's cell, and the creepy Reth takes an unhealthy liking to Quan almost immediately. He identifies the artifact and tells Master Chief that the Covenant's entire religion is based on artifacts like this. He informs them that the Covenant try to get human captives to interface with various artifacts to see if they can get them to work. Reth tells them that Blessed Ones are humans that can activate the artifacts and who have some type of obligation to the Covenant. When Master Chief asks him what the artifact is, Reth grabs the objects and tries to attack Master Chief with it, but when Master Chief takes the artifact away, he unintentionally activates it, causing him to experience more memories before putting the artifact back in its case. Reth reveals that the Covenant have a Blessed One, but John is different from the one that they have. Reth tells Master Chief that the Covenant want the ring that the artifact projects, and that the ring is a super weapon that can end life as we know it. So, if I'm not mistaken, this character of Reth in lore is actually an alien. Yeah, he's He's a a jackal. Jackal? Jackal. Jackal. Why did I say jackal? He's a jackal. So... If you look at the way he acts in the show, he's very like animalistic, kind of like crawling around. That's the little... guy in the prison cell yeah, with the bad teeth. Yeah, exactly. Got it. He, like the way he's acting is really similar to the way the jackals act in the games. Like they're very scurrying and they're kind of like bird-like and they're a little creepy and they kind of like, they're, they act very similar to how he does in the show. So I'm like watching this. I'm like, 
they knew he was supposed to be a jackal, but they turned it, turned it into a human. I'm guessing because yeah. they didn't want to do a CGI thing or whatever. I, I, Saving a little money, I guess. But I still think it would have been better. Walking like, in here gave me um, Silence of the Lamb energy. It was it was very Hannibal Lecter. Like all of the different criminals, I can smell your gun. As oh. she's like walking, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, well, imagine like if they were all aliens. Yeah. How much creepier that would have been. Yeah. How much more that would have sold the scene. Yeah. So but, and these, but, peop but, these people are all there voluntarily, right? You said yeah, it's a yeah. self-confinement thing. Like, like Soren basically said that like it looks like it's a prison, but this is actually a place for people who don't fit in to protect themselves and others, you know, from from them. So th this is basically kind of like a psych ward where you check yourself in and you just live in like your little cell mm -hmm. uh, so that you can avoid having to deal with like normal people. I, I can I go? <laughs> <laughs> My only issue with this is just that I, I knew they were supposed to be aliens and you can clearly see they're all acting like that, like they're acting like covenant aliens. And I'm like, man, it would have been so cool if it was just like a bunch of jackals behind cages, like like doing creepy ass shit. Yeah. And like, oh, these are these are prisoners from the Covenant War. We've captured them and we brought them here for interrogation or they something like that. They could have just hired like a um makeup artist to make them well, into, yeah, like, just alien. go the puppet route. Or yeah, something. puppet yeah. route. Or even even if they wanted to get creative with like the lighting and stuff and just have him in the background, all you see is like a slight figure that looks like a jackal from the games. I'm like, or with like a glowy eye or something like that would have worked too. The same thing could have happened. Some, some, some kind of practical, you know, I, I feel like they needed Jim Henson's company to, to exactly be like, like with like we were talking about the the Dark Crystal. The Dark people Crystal, earlier. yeah. So, like yeah. get rid of that C CG. Utilize it over here mm -hmm. and and make those guys just puppets. Well, also, they might have made the um, the executive decision to only have uh, the covenant be represented by elites. So, like, there are no other alien oh, races in there. That would be terrible. Hmm. They better not have done that. We haven't seen any other though. Have yeah. We haven't seen any other aliens. Yeah, they, they haven't even mentioned them. Oh no. But what was interesting about this scene was, uh, so I was obsessed with this guy's teeth mm. because, like, his teeth are just like so wacky, and I'm like, I've seen those teeth before. <laughs> And uh, this, the, this guy was actually in the um, the Wheel of Time series on Amazon as well. And oh, okay. I don't think that those are fake teeth. I think those are actually his teeth. <laughs> I thought they were prosthetics. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, I, I, thought 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 so I thought you were going to say it's the I'm the captain now guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not it. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like there there were a lot of big you know, kind of revelations in this scene because this is the first time that not only Master Chief but the audience is actually learning about the Covenant. Right. And you'd think the UNSC would have figured this stuff out by now by like rescuing like POWs or something like that. But apparently this is all new. And so like we're, we're learning that, you know, the religion is based around these artifacts mm -hmm. that, uh, and Master Chief discovers that the they already have a blessed one and that, uh, you know, uh, he has like some type of connection there. Yeah. And they're... There's a scene where Master Chief pins Reth up against the wall. He's like, what am I? Why did you say that name? Oh, that's right. I for, yeah, that's bad. I didn't like that part. That was kind of stupid. I forgot about it. I blocked it out of my head. Chief is not supposed to lose his cool, man. He's like, he's the fucking chief. You don't. Yeah, but there's some like alien stuff going on. Well, the minute that he it's learns that there's like this life ending weapon that the Covenant's is after, like that, like you can see the switch flip in his mm -hmm. head where he's like, Okay, I've had enough of my excursion. I have to. I have to. I have a job to back. do. Yeah. Gotta go home now. Should have had his helmet on. Just saying. He was on Rumspringer. <laughs> Rumspringer. <laughs> he, he you really hate was. that movie. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I keep referencing it. Like, like really, I need to. I need to expunge it from my body. <laughs> Master Chief really was though. He was trying food. He was like yeah. taking his armor off. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> Spartan Rumspringer. Uh -huh. having, having pellet withdrawals. <laughs> What is that? It's a mango. <laughs> 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 Gross. <laughs> Real food? <laughs> I was like Soren, whenever he eats in front of Master Chief, he's just like, mm, mm, mm. oh my God. It was so, good. It was so goofy. He's <laughs> like, uh, tastes like freedom. I'm like, fuck, bro. <laughs> I prefer my super beats. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 1995, right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we get sponsored by Super Beats? I'd like some of that Super Beats money. <laughs> 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 
right, what happens next? All right. Disturbed by the information he received from Reth, Master Chief decides he has to go back to the UNSC and warn them. Master Chief explains he's seen Covenant weapons turn entire planets into glass, and if they're going after something worse, he needs to stop them. Master Chief asks Soren to look after Quan, despite their complicated history with one another. Quan doesn't want to be left behind, but Soren and Quan don't have much choice as Master Chief gets back in his condor and leaves Rubble behind. Master Chief then activates his tracking beacon once more and alerts Silver Team of his whereabouts. Silver Team picks him up and delivers him to the UNSC as a prisoner. I'm so happy he left her behind yeah i was yeah. like but thank you I, i'm America. afraid now they're just going to give her her own separate storyline totally and, what's gonna and, happen and now we're still going to be following her but without master chief <laughs> like, yeah. in the scene. and nobody cares we got yeah, yeah no, it's like oh it's a quan ha fast forward yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what well, my hope is my hope and it's probably not going to be accurate but my hope is that she, you know she'll have her own storyline right she's going to go after the dude who's murdering yeah. people on her planet I, I get it right but i want that like if you're going to spread that plot line over how many episodes we got left? Seven, seven episodes. Give her like 30 to 40 minutes of screen time on her own little mission. And then the majority of it's going to be chief doing his thing. And just like every once in a while, we do a little flash of Quan doing her thing. That's fine. So you don't think that the keystone is going to lead them back to Madrigal where they once again cross paths and uh, intersect their storylines. Maybe. Or maybe she gets done with her thing and she gets captured by the UNSC or something. She maybe. becomes the leader of Magical. Yeah. Well, that's what she wanted, And they gotta right? go through her to get anything accomplished. <laughs> but, well, we did get the answer that that one mining colony was not the entirety of yes, Madrigal. Yes, yeah. This yeah. episode. We did make fun of that. Uh, apparently, there's one city named after the planet that exists uh, on the planet in addition to other refineries and stuff like that. In fact, they made a, they, uh, in the uh, UNSC council scene, they made, they made a, a line about how, how cheap gas prices are now that they have control of Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're like, we increased the supply. Yeah. <laughs> we, need to, we need to tap into that strategic reserve. Not very cool of a joke, <laughs> you rich fucks making this show. Oh, man. It's... I don't know what they're going to do with Quan, but I'm, I was so happy to see her get left behind. <laughs> thank yeah. God. It's like, give it to the kid. <laughs> get, get a buzz off, kid. I'm going to yeah. go do my thing. I'm like, thank you. Hang, thank out, you. hang out with the deserter. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it was also kind of weird because like Master Chief, like he really doesn't treat um, Soren all that well. And Soren's just kind of like, yeah, but he's my buddy. So I'm just going to go along with him. I didn't see a problem with it. Hey, can you take care of her? I got a job to do. I oh, understand. yeah. I, I don't have an issue with that yeah. at all. Yeah, he's like, you gave me five minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> he's like, I had, to, I had to eat bugs for like three weeks. Yeah, bugs and berries or something. Or bark and berries or yeah, whatever bark, he said. bark and bugs. Something. Made uh. you tough. <laughs> You're a Spartan. It's hard right. to get them into pill form. <laughs> I just shove them up my butt. Yeah. Shove them up my butt. <laughs> you know how uncomfortable it is to shove bark up your ass? I kept this uncomfortable hunk of metal, metal up, up my, my ass. ass for 12 years. <laughs> and now is, I'm giving it to you. What the hell is wrong with us? <laughs> All right. What happens next? All right. Once Master Chief returns... Halsey immediately confiscates the artifact. She goes to see Master Chief in his cell, and he reveals to Halsey that he's starting to feel something, but once he brings up his memories, Halsey changes the subject. When Halsey asks him what it was about Quan that made him disobey orders, Master Chief tells her that the situation wasn't different because he's seen lots of people die in the past. Rather, it's him that's different, and he feels connected to something. As Halsey continues interrogating Master Chief, we see Maquis getting butt-ass naked, revealing some scarring on her shoulder blade, which could be the Covenant's mark of shame, which could mean that she's what's known as the Arbiter. Finally, Halsey returns to her lab and sets the Cortana project in motion by awakening her clone. Did you have to trigger me? <laughs> okay, just, just, real, just really quick. I saw it happen and it was delightful. <laughs> Alex's eyes just completely went white. Like, you know how the Undertaker does uh -huh. it? Oh, hard roll. <laughs> Clear into the back of his head. That was that was Dude, funny. why would you say that? <laughs> That's so terrible. That's such a terrible idea. Well, how else do you explain the scarring on that shoulder? Because it was a very particular pattern. I thought it was a really cool brand tattoo. <laughs> That's the problem. That's what they do to the Arbiter. <laughs> they brand them, and then they have to go on yeah, suicide the, missions. Oh, well, there, there's, been, there's been this big fan theory that the Arbiter, who's this main alien character in Halo 2, is very important to you know the, the Halo story in the games, is being replaced by McKee in the show, um, you know, for budgeting reasons or like whatever. But um, this is the first time that, you know, as she's taken off all of her clothes, we see that brand on her shoulder blade. And so a lot of people are speculating, okay, 
that confirms that she's going to be the arbiter in the show as opposed to the Covenant elite who was the arbiter in the video game. But the arbiter, the, the mantle of arbiter is not necessarily a good thing. It happened when you fail epically at something, the prophets say, you have failed us, you are worthless to us, you are no longer allowed to have your rank and title, you are now considered the arbiter, and the arbiter just is the sole one person who they send on like suicide missions. Because you're, they look at you like you're a piece of shit, and you just go yeah. and you, you know, you do our bidding, and here's, if you die, you die. All I can say Cattle. is that uh, yeah. I'm intrigued. It, and it, but it's only because I have no connection to this. I, so. I would also say that that could be a mark that signifies to other Covenant that, you know, she's one of the good humans who's protected. So, like, we don't know that that's, God, the, that's that, the case. That, we don't know that that's the Arbiter mark yet, but it's some type of mark because they made it a very specific point of showing that. Yeah. Along with a lot of side boob and it, butt. It wouldn't, make, it wouldn't make any sense for her to be the Arbiter. It just wouldn't. Like, you can't be the blessed one and also the Arbiter. Like, Make an elite the armor, man. Whatever. You also got me stressed out that there's not going to be any grunts or jackals in the show either. <laughs> I was just like, God damn it. It's all about the budget, Alex. I can't afford that. Story. Get out of here. Get a puppet. Call Stan Winston's company. <laughs> they got to save some stuff for season two, man. Oh, oh, dude, if, if they went puppet instead of CGI in this, like I could see them doing CGI for the uh, for the elites because they're but, like, like eight feet tall. But. Like if, if the Covenant was just a bunch of like Jim Henson puppets, oh, that'd, that'd be, be so good. Yeah, but I mean, especially with, the with the technology the tech and you can like merge it with yeah, cgi it would be great yeah it'd be awesome it would be awesome practical effects are always good always good and, uh, and it would kind of go with the goofiness of the grunts and stuff like that mm -hmm. from like the, the the game like it, it would have been really cool I think. yeah i think so too but mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right what happens next oh that's it that's the that's the end of the episode, episode. oh that's wait, right wait, okay. didn't, didn't she flip cortana on at the end well, well, she she awakened the clone, the Flash clone that they created for the Cortana program. I don't. Yeah, that's a, so. In in lore, um, Halsey transfers her mind into a digital okay. form, and that's what creates. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by this Cortana. Cortana. I don't know why they having a physical clone of Halsey be the like the middleman between her and so, Cortana. So it, it's called a Flash clone, and basically what it is 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 um, Halsey um, cloned herself including all of her memories and knowledge and stuff like that. And the way that this is going to work is they're going to extract the brain from the clone and digitize it into Cortana. And so basically Halsey is making herself uh, Cortana and she's going to inhabit the body of the Master Chief. At least that's her plan mm -hmm. initially. So um, the idea here is that the Cortana that Master Chief eventually inherits isn't able to take over his consciousness and kind of like goes off in a different direction from Halsey once, you know, you know the cloning process has been mm -hmm. complete. And it becomes the Cortana that we know from the games and the relationship that she has with right. Master Chief. And that's why she looks different than Halsey in, right. the, in the hologram form. We're going to have like a Freaky Friday situation. Uh, was I the only one who like picked up on a little thirstiness between Halsey and uh, Master Chief? You're there not. The They've end? been talking about it in the, in the chat. Have they? Uh-huh. Oh, I, I haven't been listening, but it, I felt like there was something there. I always looked at her as like a mother figure to yeah, Chief. So it I'm seems not, like it seems kind of weird to me. If, if, that, if, if that's if that's where yeah, going. if there's some romantic thing going on, I I didn't pick up on it. But yeah, Halsey seems to like her men, like she likes her coffee. So without a helmet, <laughs> <laughs> creamy and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, what are the um the dark crystal guys? What are they called? Skexies. No, no. You mean the jack, the jackals, the prophets, the prophets. Oh, prophets. Okay. okay. Yeah. I really want somebody to make. Yeah. No, I know what they're called. Mm, <laughs> I really want someone to make a, a video where they replace those with the dark crystal skeksis. Oh yeah. I can't say it though. <laughs> the the sengshayi. Right. That's the species name is sengshayi. I don't know. I knew. No, that, that, I found that out. This that, week. That's in Halo, right? Yeah. You're talking about the prophets. Yeah. The prophets in Halo are the sengshayi. And then the Shai or Shai Shai, and then the the okay. elites are the Sing Healy. I think JT is saying, um, "Excuse me, I got it wrong." <laughs> uh, he doesn't think that there's um, like thirst between Halsey and Master Chief. He thinks it's Master Chief and the Lady Spartan that are okay. banging. All right, I don't know why they would be banging. Yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> The, the treatments, the Spartan treatments kind of suppress uh, sexual urges. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wondered that too, because if they took away their taste, I was like, they took 
pretty much everything away. Probably well, they, took they, away the... Uh, well, him and, and the, the lady Spartan, they probably like spend a really long time taking each other's armor off. <laughs> It's like, oh. And then after that, they're like, you know what? Never mind. I just want to go to bed. She she goes over to Halsey. She let me see her boobies and I like them too. (laughs) I I had no idea those things were under all that armor. Why don't I have those? Those are fun. (laughs) He's not a biologist. (laughs) All right. Well, that's it. What do you guys think? As as noobs to the Halo universe. I'm I'm still still in. You like it? I'm enjoying this probably more than you because... It's just a sci-fi super soldier thing to me. Yeah, so, I'm uh, over yeah. here dissecting it. Yeah, I'm having like, I'm having a good time with it. I have to say though, like after the last episode, I started fact checking them on last. There's a lot of they're taking a lot of stuff from the lore. I mean, they're they're condensing it and moving mm-hmm. things around. <sighs> There's a lot less to complain about as far as that goes, right? For this, you know, going back and like dusting off my knowledge of Halo and and figuring everything out. Like I can't really complain about the lore. They're stinking pretty close yeah. to it, except for the um, what is it, McKee? McKee. McKee character. That's the only thing that's really like irking me. I'm if it's one of the few shows out there that I don't get annoyed by the end of it watching it. Mm. So yeah, I'm in that's so good. far. So Jude, far, how, so good. How about you? Um, I don't have as much invested in it as you. And um I uh, sci-fi is not my great love, so I don't really care yet. I'm still I'm still watching it. There are parts of it that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. There are also parts of it that I'm like, God, that's annoying or I don't care. Like um, Quan, I think, is a really annoying character. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by everything that's going on with McKee, which I know is probably going to trigger you. Um, but uh, this, this space stuff, I'm kind of like, I don't really care yet. <laughs> All right. But I, I'm I'm in. I'm, I'm hoping that I start liking it more than I currently am. Okay. Okay, what did you think about this episode? So I actually liked this episode a lot more than I was expecting to. Um, like I said, like it did a lot of good world building. I still get really annoyed every time Master Chief takes his helmet off, especially like once he puts it on, I'm like, oh, yes, it feels like Halo. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the, stop, stop feeling like Halo. Yeah, the rarity is that he has it on, which is annoying as hell. Yeah, and, and it removes a lot of the mystique of the character and stuff like that. But like, you know, I, I like that this episode kind of slowed things down. It wasn't an action heavy episode. It kind of took the time to flesh out the, the universe that we're um, seeing the story play out in. I really am not liking Quan, so I'm glad that they kind of sidelined her, and I'd like to get back in with the, the Spartan storyline and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, overall, like, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a good follow-up. I know that I'm probably in the minority in that opinion because overall it seems like all the Halo fans were like, where's the action? Where's the fighting? Yeah, I didn't get that. I, I heard, like, I was really worried because I heard a lot of people were like, this episode sucks. And I was like, oh, no. But I was, I'm kind of with Kadish. I'm like, I like the world building. I like yeah. the political intrigue. There's a couple things I have nitpicky. Not even nitpicky. I just I have a couple issues with, you know, obvious, like, Halo stuff. But overall, as far as the TV show goes, I'm, I'm on board. I get it. Yeah, like the first two episodes that we've seen so far, like I've actually really enjoyed. So I'm not like down on this show. I mean, there are a few nitpicks that I have just like Alex, but overall, like I I thought it was pretty good. Question. Yeah. Just to so. clarify, um, Quan and McKee both are not in the game or the lore or anything, right? These these are two characters completely no. made I mean, up for this show. There's yes? characters as that who are part of the insurgents of colony or not insurgents. Um, like the separatist colonies. Mm-hmm. There's there's characters that are in that sphere, um, but there's no like specific Quan character. Yeah, all, okay. all, all the game stuff. It's same with Mickey. Yeah. Okay. All, all the game stuff. It's kind of focused on UNSC soldiers and and the fights that they're having with the Covenant. So like, I mean, when you get to some of the expanded like books and comic books and stuff like that, you see some of these like other aspects. But for the most part, it was very straightforward military yeah. um you know kind of action adventure game like there's a group of characters that are part of the rebellion against the UNSC in the book that I just read uh, silent storm who try to team up with the covenant because they want like my the enemy of my enemy is my friend type yeah. thing and uh, the covenant just like completely betrays them and kills them all <laughs> they're like you're Spoiler. useless yeah. they're like we're gonna take whatever you have all the information on the spartans thank you you're dead now uh-huh. and it was like that's kind of like how the covenant rolls they're like yeah they'll use humans for their advantage and then as soon as they're done they'll Kill them. The keys exist though, right? Uh, yeah, there's keystones, there's indexes, there's all types of no, no, different. No, no. The the Miranda keys. And, oh, the keys. Yes. Uh, her, her father. Father. Captain keys. Captain keys. Jacob, I think his name is. Um, they're they exist. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very much so. Okay. Through. I just I really enjoy knowing um like 
as far as like what the source material is doing, I like I like to compare things mm -hmm. and not knowing. Um, I think is probably why I'm I'm not as invested in it. Um, but I like knowing that shit. I'll send you a video. Did did, did I ask you guys? <laughs> I won't watch it. <laughs> did I ask you guys in the last episode um, why they were speaking Korean? In, in like the outpost. Was that Korean? Was that what that was? Yeah. No. They, so basically Kwon Ha and uh, her father, Jin Ha, are um, Korean, mm. apparently. And uh, when they were speaking to one another, mm -hmm. they were talking in Korean. But er everyone else speaks English. And I was just wondering if she grew up on Madrigal, which was an English-speaking planet, why she knew Korean and why they felt the need to inject that I need into you to the let show. Go. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I assume that it was in like a space language. Uh, speaking of space languages, uh, McKee is is speaking um, a completely made up language for this show um, that was created by the person who created Dothraki from I Game of Thrones. Dug that. Yeah, so I, I mean I like that. That's cool. I still don't like her character because I don't know what they're doing with her. And if okay. they turn her in the Arbiter, I'm gonna freak out. But untrust. Yeah. -ing. <laughs> <laughs> but her the fact that that actress is speaking a completely made up language and and communicating like that is really cool and i, I like that it had like a connection to game of thrones from the dothraki and stuff um, cool. i also wanted to point out that so for this week we were watching uh, assassin movies for the main salty nerd podcast mm -hmm. episode and one of those movies was uh, leon the professional mm -hmm. um, which i brought up in the our first review as basically they took that storyline and kind of like just used it for you know the first two episodes or so but they're, they're kind of following the you know uh, really badass killer who takes like a young girl under his wing and you know protects her and stuff like that so having watched uh that movie for this week do you guys uh see what i was talking about sure the parallels no because he dropped bit. her off with yeah. his buddy no just i, I have to disagree yeah <laughs> like in the first episode i could totally see where sure. you were thinking that but having this one where he's like all right i gotta go do my job he leave her here he didn't teach her how to be an assassin yeah well i mean yeah. there, there was a part in in leon the professional where he tries to get rid of her where he tries to kick her out and then she just fires a gun out the window. She's like, now you're stuck with me. <laughs> uh, so like, I'm guessing that at a certain point, Quan is going to do the same thing where she gets herself into trouble and Chief is forced to come rescue her. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to keep her near me because otherwise she's going to get Gotta killed. Hope not. I right. hope not. Well, after the finale, we'll let you know whether or not you were right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for our uh, review of Halo episode two. What did you think of the episode? Are you on the, uh, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of discrepancies with this show so far. So let us know in the comments. Are you on that side or do you think we're, being fair, let us know in the comments. Do you think we don't know what we're talking about? Oh, Pop it in the comments. I'm <laughs> checking myself on everything after this. I ha I have really, I, I'm like- Halo fact checkers. Uh, no, I'm serious. Like I, I look back at that first review and I'm like, I'm kind of glad that CBS freaking blocked it because I was like an idiot on that. <laughs> but no, it was, I'm, I'm going forward. I'm like double and triple checking everything that I have to make sure my criticisms are legit. So um, Vader, where can they find you on the socials, bud? Uh, you can find me at MattVader74 on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Gitter, the places. <laughs> <laughs> Gitter. Uh, all right. Jude, where can they find you at? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and on TikTok. And Matthew Kadish. You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K A D I S H, on Twitter. Kadishbooks.com takes you to my Amazon page. And if you'd be so kind as to go to saltynerd.com forward slash rate, R A T E, that'll take you to Apple Podcasts where you can leave us a five star rating. We're trying to get 200 of those suckers in order to get officially accredited as movie reviewers over at Rotten Tomatoes. So any help you can throw our way would be greatly appreciated. And head over to saltynerddiscord.com and uh, come join the Halo chat. Uh, again, a nice big shout out to Dan who's been chatting with me all week about Halo. Um, I've had a blast doing it. I've, I've, I love going down the rabbit hole with him. Uh, it's a ton of fun. So head over to the Discord app and uh, come talk Halo with us. What were you gonna say, V? I say, uh, make sure you uh, join us here on this channel, Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Star Trek. time for Pacific. our Star Trek chat that we're doing for the next couple months over the course of through, we're gonna be going through Strange New Worlds. Okay. And then we're gonna revamp. Right on. So. All right, cool. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, stay salty. Thank you.